Hey guys, Mike here. Beginning of another trail. So I'm just airing down. I think I'm gonna go down to about 10 PSI. Don't need to go too crazy low in these conditions. Zero degrees C, so can actually make tracks today. Given how my last trip turned out, I'm hoping for a smoother run on this one. On average, the snow's about three feet high and very dense so a bit too much for my 35s to float on. But I found a semi-ploughed logging road that must have been worked before the last snowfall. This should be a leisurely drive for the XJ, and hopefully it will get me deep enough before or if the snow gets more challenging. All right, let's go. It's a pretty leisurely drive. I can't really uh, say it's too challenging at all. Just cruising up, up this uh, this track here. It's really nice actually just to be out on a track that isn't super challenging where you're getting stuck all the time like the last couple of trips I've been on. It really does eat into the time and I kind of want to make some distance today and see where this goes. I've set off early today and it's supposed to turn into a bright and sunny winter's day, although it apparently drops off to around minus 10 degrees C in the evening. But I'm reaching the end of the ploughed section of road, and to be fair, it's taken me within 200 metres of one of the lakes, meaning I can do some ice fishing, but given how early it is, I think I'm going to keep exploring and keep this place as plan B. Don't think I'm really going to stick around here. Uh, the day is young, and uh, I saw a track back there. Going to check that out. It takes me up to a lake. It looks a bit better, so uh, let's see what it's like. recently replaced some bound up spider gears on the front diff, but the downside of this is it's just an open diff again, whether as before, when it was broken, the front was completely locked all the time. It's reminded me of how much the front lets down the whole vehicle. I seriously need a locker. But in this case, the rear is doing all the work on this low traction incline, and to try and give it a bit more traction, I'm going to add some chains to keep the front elevated and attempt to push more from the rear. 
tried taking it slow but it's not working so low range third seems to be doing the trick and despite getting more traction it's not really ideal chains obviously are great at digging so as the front compacts the snow the rear tears it apart dragging the rear axle through the center rut so i'm going to take them off and do what i should have done right at the start airing down even more and attempting to float while driving back and forth to compact a track it's tedious but it puts a lot less stress on the vehicle I really need a front locker. <sighs> yeah, I'm nearly there. It's just been a fucking pain in the ass, this. I've reached the tree line and the track just isn't doable on my setup. I'm on one PSI and I just cannot float enough on this snow. It's deeper up here due to the cover from the trees and it's also very compacted on top yet granular underneath so traction is terrible. Despite the progress the chains made I don't want to risk breaking something as they only add stress to everything in dense snow. In early winter snow this deep isn't a problem, it's just light powder, but it's not early winter anymore. So I'm going to back up and I'm going to air up a little bit, and it's back to plan B. <sighs>
Well, I just leveled the vehicle a little bit more. Wasn't quite happy with that. Didn't need the uh, traction boards in the end. But anyway, here we are, this is it. Just gonna get set up. I'm starving, time for a bacon sandwich. And then I'm gonna drag my ass to that lake to try and get some ice fishing in before the sun goes down. Cause I really do want to do that actually. It's not the best spot for uh, for filming with the sun and the angles, so sorry about that. But uh, I'm out the wind and it's more important that um, that's the case this evening. So uh, I'm expecting a few, a bit of a gusty night. disappointed with Primus winter gas it's not really even that cold today absolutely struggling it's not cheap stuff either I have thought about going over to induction cooking um, I've had a few comments about that I think it would work for me in the summer and maybe the later part of the winter and the earliest part of the winter but in the middle of winter where you get sort of like two hours daylight and it's barely daylight you know the, the sun just kind of shows its face and it's gone again within sort of like half an hour then that that's um it's not going to work. I, I barely generated any solar this winter. This big old all powers battery has been fantastic actually. I'm interested to see how it will do in the summer. But uh, yeah, solar, I can't imagine I'm ever going to have an issue when um, you get 24 hour daylight here in Northern Europe. So yeah, it's just one of those things I need to think about. It. What, what I will probably um, do though is get an electric kettle for boiling water because they do draw a lot of power. But when you have a two litre flask like this and you boil up a couple of litres, put it in the flask. You know, you are saving a lot of power really and I don't need to muck around with stoves and everything, but have to see. Oh, good job the bears are asleep. They'll be coming in hot. This is a very relaxing experience. God, I yam that down like a pelican. It's even too much, really. I probably need the energy. Put some Yorkshire tea. Get to see some English visitors. Look at that. in on some boiling water. With some fuel on board, I'm ready to hike out and try and add some fresh perch to tonight's meal. That's the plan anyway. I've decided I'm going to set the roof tent up when I get back though, just so the vehicle is a bit more secure while I'm away.
few white maggots. I'll try my own maggot, but I don't want to deplete the lake of all its fish, so you know, you've got to be fair, haven't we? You've got to, got to play by the rules. I won't draw this out, the fishing isn't going well. With ice fishing I normally spend 15 minutes in one location and then I move and drill a new hole somewhere else. Finding the fish is the name of the game and if you can do that then you generally have a pretty good day. But despite the hours I've spent on the lake moving around, I've only caught one and it's barely enough to make up one captain bird's eye fish finger so I'm letting it go. But the sun is almost behind the tree line temperatures are dropping and I would like to do some wood processing before I get back to camp so I'm getting off of this lake onto the water's edge where the dead standing pines and fallen spruces are. Well hopefully that's gonna work and hopefully you can hear me because all this stuff is dead. Second time in a row just bought all this and it just died. Fucking yes! Love GoPro. I like supporting the sinking ship these lights from uh, Outdoor Days here in Sweden. They actually gave them to me, which is very kind. So um, the only thing I will say is they, well, I've tangled the crap out of them like an idiot. So it's just gonna have to be like this. I'm just gonna have to go for it. There we are. Hey, that'll do, that'll do. I know I'm using a lighter, forgive me, but uh, time is of the essence. I kind of just want to get this going and warm up a bit. And uh, yeah. cheat tonight cook on the white gas just kind of fancy it um, just rice just just goes a lot better on this that's my excuse anyway um, but uh, yeah should be a decent meal haven't even set my tent up yet crazy I'm gonna do that while this rice is uh, steaming that is a full rolling ball bag boil I better get that off well, the tent's all set up, just one piece of the puzzle left, and that's the, the elephant dip. Stand that up in there, open that vent, pop that in. And I'll chuck this. I just need to change the vents over now, have it, the hot air going into the vehicle, because I just wanted to dry this thing off, see whether it had water damage and that's why it was playing up. I'll try that in a minute. But I can just change the vent saver pretty easily. At the moment it's, uh, yeah. Still yet to perfect that, but no, no air's coming in the vehicle and it's all going up in the rooftop tent. I've finished and eaten my evening meal and the fire is dying down 
which is normally my cue to climb into the roof tent. It's been a really good day, even despite the bad fishing. And I've packed up the back of the vehicle, and now it's time to get out of the cold and the wind and hunker down in the tent. Well, welcome to my humble abode. I don't even know whether you can hear me. I've strung together some extra camera crap that I carry around with me, so hopefully it sounds and looks the same as before. But uh, yeah, I'll give you a little bit of a first-hand tour. Here we go. I tend not to rattle on about gear, but I've got an X-Bed Mega Mat Duo under here and another mat under that, which uh, kind of softens it up a bit. It really just takes the wind off of the the in-between of the roof and the, and the tent really that can be a bit of a problem but you know got a torch up there got my gear got the camera rubbish the little turd tray very useful when you're desperate for a dump in the night and you just plop it on there and bat that thing out the window in the morning but um, obviously its main use is to collect water off of my boots and um, you know or else it just gets too wet up here basically but uh, camera gear, some clothes, some sanitary stuff, hygiene stuff, yeah, and there's my bag and the roof tent uh, heater, carbon monoxide detector, but yeah, it's pretty pretty nice up here to be honest, very warm. That's it, pretty comfortable setup, obviously quite comfortable for one person, but you know, obviously my wife and, and my family join me sometimes, although not often enough these days. But you know, just just the kind of period at which we're in in life with young families and stuff, and this kind of being something that I do when they're at work um, is a little bit of a different setup. You know, I'm self-employed, so my time off is is sometimes a little bit kind of more lenient than others. But um, anyway, I'm gonna gonna hit the sack, literally my ball sack against the side of the tent as hard as I can and see if I get a reply from Bigfoot. I'll see you in the morning. But it was a pretty pleasant night. I didn't have the diesel heater going all night. Uh, I switched it off before I went to bed and woke up about 6.30, switched it back on. And uh, the great thing is now, the engine is just piping hot. So the new system I've got is being protected pretty well by that skid plate. And uh, the snow yesterday didn't destroy it like the last time I went out. But uh, yeah, I've had it running for a couple of hours and the cylinder heads are warm. Everything's nice and hot, so uh, you know when you start the engine, it should uh, just fire right up and be pretty happy. So um, that is a nice thing now about this new system. That uh, whilst I'm taking the condensation out of the tent, and drying off everything up there because of the frost and things, I'm heating up the engine too. So uh, it's working really well. This battery is an absolute biff. 98%. You know, you could literally do quite a few days on this and not have to worry about it, so, uh, yeah. Minus three in the fridge though, not so good. So I need to put some heat back in that. When I'm out here, sometimes I like to take a step back from the rig, look at all the equipment I'm carrying and, and sort of, in my mind, do a side-by-side -side comparison of myself to like a sparrow. And then it's just reassuring to know that we're sort of on par in terms of our, our survival skills. So, uh, yeah.
I've had a few pancakes and cups of tea for breakfast and it's almost time to move on and bid this place farewell. The tent is condensation free, warm and dry, so I can pack it away without any damp surprises at the next camp. I'm almost all squared away though, I'm just making a couple of litres of water and that's the jeep all packed up and ready to go. Well that's camp squared away, ready to move on to another location. I do have another place in mind where I'm going to, nearer to where I live. Uh, we camped there with some mates who came from the UK, like I mentioned uh, a little while ago. Really nice camp actually, lovely spot. This has been a super chilled camp anyway, unlike the last one where I broke the front axle shaft, blew the spider gears to pieces, the diesel heater got trashed and then it was like the strongest winds we've had in the last 50 years. The tent survived that and it did really well. And I'm really happy about that, but I have built like a spreader bar. Um, I know Wildlands sell that, but it's in Australia. And for me to get it here in Sweden, I probably have to pay a ludicrous amount of money for it. So just build your own. It's the way it goes, isn't it? Easy, easy to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use that in future when the wind picks up. But um, yeah, not too dramatic this time round. I would film my next location, but you've seen it all before. Unless something really cool happens, that'll be the last you see of me until the next video. So I just want to say a big thanks to everyone out there for watching. Thanks to Patreon for supporting the channel. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and I'll see you very soon in another one. So take care.